Hi there! This Prince Rupert's drop might seem ordinary to you, but what if I put the drop from the previous video next to it? Now the first one already seems large, doesn't it? But we didn't stop there, and for today's video we got such an enormous Rupert's drop. Well, as in the previous video, we took a glass of water, a glass rod, and began to melt it with a gas burner. As you remember, a Rupert's drop is created exactly this way. However, since our burner's flame temperature isn't very high, we needed someone to help melt a much larger piece of glass and create a huge droplet. In the last video, we promised to find a professional who could accomplish this, but it turned out to be not so simple. We needed a glass blower who agreed on such a task, but the problem was that most glass blowers didn't even understand what we were talking about. We eventually found the person we needed, but we had to go to another part of our country, we had previously agreed on the dates, and started packing our bags. Off we go to new adventures! The one-way journey took about 6 hours. Immediately upon arrival, the glass blower met us by car, and we headed to the glass blowing workshop. It is located on the university campus in a building that is over a hundred years old. In the workshop, traces of experiments with Rupert's drops were visible everywhere. And near the exit, there was even a pile of shards from cracked droplets. Glass blower told us about his developments, and which type of glass works best to create a better drop. It turns out that tempered glass is the most suitable, with it the droplet will be much stronger than with any other type of glass. Most of the huge Rupert's drops on YouTube were made from flint glass. It is much softer, making it easier to create a drop, but its strength properties are practically lost. We made several small drops for experiments, including some from cobalt blue glass, which is both durable and has a beautiful blue color. The largest Rupert's drops need to be made on a special burner with the addition of oxygen. This increases the temperature to over 2000 degrees Celsius. It was impossible to film the entire process without special protective clothing. It is a very hot process. While it was hot in the workshop, the cameraman and I cooled off outside, where it was only 33 degrees Celsius. However, after a couple of hours, several droplets of the right size were ready. To test the strength of Rupert's drop, you can look at it through polarizing glasses. Inside, we will see distortions due to the tension of the glass. If we see rainbow rings, it means everything worked out and the drop turned out to be tempered. Well, today we learned how to make large Rupert's drops and assembled a whole collection of different ones. Now, all that's left is to pack all the drops to transport them home safely. And it's time to leave! Upon returning home, we unpacked our boxes with droplets and saw that we didn't manage to transport the largest drop. Despite all precautions, its tail broke somewhere on the way, and we now have only a pile of beautiful shards. But fortunately, I am a resourceful person, so we still had several other droplets left, and I must say they were also of considerable size. For experiments, the size is crucial because the larger the drop, the greater loads it can withstand. We also brought along all the other smaller drops and assembled a whole collection of Rupert's drops. Let's move on to the experiments. Droplets of this size can explode quite seriously, so we decided to conduct all experiments away from home. We gathered all the necessary equipment and decided to go far outside the city to avoid disturbing anyone. We took a whole bunch of torture devices for our poor droplets. Do you think something from our set will beat our drop? In the previous video, we showed that if you apply force to the base of Rupert's drop, it's unlikely that a person will somehow damage it. However, if you break its tail, the drop will immediately disintegrate into the tiniest shards. It's possible to perform such actions with small drops in your hands, observing safety techniques. But for a large drop, we decided to construct a protective barrier from polyethylene film. 
it exploded quite impressively. Several shards flew very far, so protective goggles are crucial in such experiments. Now, we took clamps and tried to squeeze our large drop in them. It was almost obvious that no matter how much we squeezed the clamp, it wouldn't matter to such a drop. Even an ordinary small drop can stand the pressure of clamps, as their compressive force is proportional to 100, 150 kilograms. Now we will try to crush the large droplet with a car. The pressure on one wheel here is already about 400 kilograms, but the rubber significantly softens this weight if the droplet is small. This time we took a metal plate so that the droplet wouldn't penetrate the ground. And as in the previous attempt, despite the size, the droplet easily withstands the impact of the car. Moreover, at any speed we tried. Well, it's time to finish this childish behavior. As you may remember, last time this 10 kg hammer completely destroyed our small Rupert's drop. But can we repeat the same with its larger version? We swing. And the droplet withstands. We were honestly very pleased, because we can move on to more complex tests. Now we took a pneumatic gun that easily breaks a glass bottle and fixed our drop in a suspended state. Well, it's time! We hesitated, because the shot passed tangentially and decided to try it again. This time, we clearly see on the frame how the iron bullet shatters against Rupert's drop. And our test subject easily withstands such an impact. Can it really withstand anything? The next morning, we went to another location where our drop surely wouldn't survive. This is an asphalt roller, and it weighs about 4 tons, but the small Rupert's drop immediately let us know that everything is not so simple when it made a hole in the asphalt. We decided to place the larger one on a concrete curb, because it is much harder than asphalt. Let's start rolling! Even with 4 tons, the large drop withstands easily, wow! We found out that this roller has a vibration mode, in which its weight becomes approximately twice as much, and we only had to try it. Rupert's drop defeated. Can we consider this the end of the story? Probably yes, but if this video gathers at least 10,000 likes, we will make an even larger drop and conduct even more experiments. And now, bye!